All these years we've been building, building, building. When that opportunity do come my way, that's when the magic happens. Oh, what a chaos! Growing up in the Edelman household was crazy. Depression, anxiety, those were things I had. I had haters before, I've just gotten more now. Legalizing sports gambling, might as well legalize cocaine and crystal meth. So many people wanted Sonny dead. The question is, who got to him first? This is the hard work part. It's the part that I don't see. We help people understand football. Holy goodness, smokes! I hope you guys enjoyed the first few months of All The Smoke. We've been getting tremendous love and support, responses. Me and Jack couldn't be happier. Man, Thank we you appreciate guys. you guys, man. Before the new year, we got a chance to chop it up with Carrie Champion. The queen of smoke. The first lady of first smoke. First lady of all smoke. And since then, she's announced she's leaving ESPN, which was kind of, it shook everybody. Mm -hmm. It shook everybody, but we happy for her. We're happy for her, because I told her personally, she's never hotter than she, you know, she, she's on fire right now. So for her to venture out and do whatever she can do, take over the world so we wanted to give you guys that intro to the situation we hope you guys enjoy this episode welcome back episode 12 all the smoke my brother my guy we back need some powder on your hands we got the amazing amazing carry champion Thank, Thank you for, for your having time. Me. I love you. Thank Appreciate you so much it. for having me. I love oh. you guys. Both You're our so first much. female guest. I know. First. Okay. How how that happen? We had an eye for you. Okay. No, I, well, I, to keep it real, I mean, I, we just love what you've been doing. You I know what I mean? You. The fact that you're, you know, you're heading Sports Center, and that's only one of the many things you're doing. Um, you know, with the success from television, obviously in the sports world, it's opened a lot of doors. So, tell us some of the other stuff you're doing. First off, I have to say I'm so happy to be here because I work with you guys both. And I don't know if people know this because they sit here and they see you guys and they're like, oh, they just talk and they have such fun and they're cool and they know people in the league. But you guys have really transitioned. That shit's hard to do, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, as an athlete to become a broadcaster, you have a voice that people respect. Obviously, they respect you. But you do it so effortlessly, both y'all. And I Thank just, you. I think that nobody acknowledges that. Like, the Thank shit's you. not easy. We get up here and we talk and they think it's easy. Right. And, and all these, so many athletes I meet, especially ball players, they want to transition yeah. they want to basketball yeah. players want to do this they want to and you can't just sit up here and just start talking mm -mm. and think it's gonna work because it no. doesn't work right <laughs> thank you um, thank you we appreciate you're it you're welcome that means a lot come from you though thank yeah you. no i have a lot of jobs i have uh i work on a show with um the rock called titan games that mm -hmm. airs on nbc so I, I host that show which i love because it lets me do like have more personality you guys both know mm -hmm. off camera i have more personality i think people feel like i'm really like elegant and uptight and, mm -hmm. and that's not me so it lets me be a little more comfortable and then um, I, I host a lot of different things where I just try to you know have a little bag and keep it aside for myself I like mm -hmm. to make all my money I don't mm. have to wait on nobody to give me no it. money I want all my little change and then I have a foundation that I run tell where us about the uh, what's it called? Brown Brown Girls Dream, where okay. I I um it's a, I, so many like dope young ladies would always hit me up in my um my inbox and say, Carrie, how do you do this or how did you do that or can you help me? Whether it be in front of the camera or behind the scenes, they just wanna they want some help. And I know when I was coming up, there was nobody like I just had to figure it out on my own. And mm -hmm. so I created this really informal mentorship where I help young girls who, and, and the ages vary, right? It could be anywhere from 20 to, to 30. But I help them get into a world where otherwise people just overlook them. Because so many women, especially if you are a woman of color, you're overlooked. You might be qualified, but you're overlooked. So right. I'm just taking them to the front of the line and I'm like, here you go. Here's somebody who's great. You may have overlooked her. She mm -hmm. deserves an opportunity. Just having the resource is so important. You for sure. I mean? that's, that's, that's the biggest thing, especially for the young, the, the youth, just to have a resource and know where to go. I think that's that's huge on your part. Thank you. I appreciate but it. It's I good. But I think there's a handful of you guys that are really in this space, women of color, who are opening doors and letting women know, 
you know what I mean? This is an, this is a platform you can utilize now. We, and before it was unheard of to have a, a black woman it was ha- having of. a voice on television. It was unheard you know, of. Outside of Oprah, Oprah's been doing it for some years. Well, that's she why, went through some right. Struggles. <laughs> right? I love Oprah. Like right. I, that's what I was a kid. I saw Oprah. I was like, Mom, mm-hmm. I want to do what this lady is doing because she looks like my auntie or like mm-hmm. somebody who'd be in the house. Like mm-hmm. you would watch her and you just be like, wow, she's she's fascinating. And and she just obviously she was. If you see it, you can believe it. And I think. When I started at, um, like, I have been in, I was a journalist for a minute, but when I started at ESPN, which was like seven years ago, I was hosting a show called First Take with Stephen A. I had him on here mm-hmm. and Skip Bayless at the time. And I remember I could count on my hands how many women I thought looked like me that I saw on TV all the time. That was only seven years ago? Yeah, I know. It feels like forever, right? Yeah. <laughs> I know. It feels like forever. Um, but they had just became partners. Like Skip and Stephen A had just became partners. They weren't They weren't always, they had just started that relationship. And then they wanted somebody just to sit in the middle and kind of tee it up. And it was just a real simple role. I wasn't supposed to really like get into it or get into the debates or any of that stuff, which was cool, which was fine. Mm-hmm. I didn't care. I just liked the opportunity. But at the time, there was no, at ESPN, there was no black woman working Monday through Friday sitting at a desk. And especially on that show, that show was like high visibility. I didn't have to, you know, it wasn't tough, but it was high visibility. And at the time, I did not know that I was working with those two personalities. You just don't have, Mm -hmm. you had no idea. And I remember uh, Jamel Hill pulled me aside one day and was like, girl, so let me just put you on some game real quick and Mm try to tell me what it would be. She was like, I was supposed to get this gig. Mm. They told me it was mine. Mm. Um, in so many words, they gave it to you. People may want us not to like one another, mm. right? Because you got it and not me. She was like, but I will not let that narrative live. She was like, I have your back. That's and from huge. day that's one to yeah, care of me. Like, that's, huge. tell me that's not, that's, that's a, totally that's a, her. That's no, a that's super dope. OG move. Yeah, no, she's, I'm a big fan of her, man, in the space. I know Jack has a good relationship with her. She's been... She's always kept it real. Always. You know, and, and Who does that? And speaks your mind. I mean, I think, like I said, for you, we spoke a little bit off camera, and we'll get into Gabby as well, but, you know, for you, you're someone who speaks your mind. She's someone who speaks her mind, and it's refreshing. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because it's always, the picture's always painted as, you know, an angry black woman mm-hmm. or, you know, hard to work with. Mm-hmm. The stereotypes and the labels get pushed around, but it's good to see that you guys have made it through, although it's, you know, it's a... It's a ongoing battle but you're at a place where you can you know you you freely speak for the most part well i think that that those labels will always be there which is why i started the the foundation because i feel like and you guys know what it is like you you come on tv and you don't look like the rest of the analyst Mm -hmm. you don't talk like the rest of the analyst and so if people don't understand who you are they um they judge you or they're uncomfortable and so I got to the point where I'm like, why does your, the level of your uncomfortness, why does that have to affect me? You're uncomfortable. You have to get comfortable. Like, that's not my situation. So I feel like, you know, with Jay, and Jay taught me this a lot. I have to tell you, she was really my mentor. Like, she schooled me on a lot at ESPN and how to move and make sure you have people who have your back or mm-hmm. have an advocate. And, but Because those closed door meetings. Mm. Watch the motherfuckers. Don't mm. watch the mm. motherfuckers. Right? Mm. In so many words, is what she was saying. Watch your back. Watch these motherfuckers. Hi. Because if you ain't got nobody, you, you're in trouble. Right. Because people can say yes or no, and that can affect your career. That'd be mm-hmm. the end of it. Yep. Um, so I think that that's what I'm trying to do with my foundation. And I think that I've gotten to a point where like Jamel will always be like or some of the people that we have in common will be like and I'll just say at work will be like you know the athletes fuck with you Carrie they fuck with mm-hmm. you heavy like they get you they get it mm-hmm. they get it like they know it's not easy I'm not sitting up here just pretending and and and, and moving through life like there's no care they know how hard it is behind yeah. the, behind you know behind the doors behind closed mm-hmm. doors mm-hmm. where did all this begin like your your love of sports and your aspirations to take this I worked, okay, so I wasn't kidding when I told you when I was a kid, I saw Oprah and I was like, I'm going to do whatever that is, mom. Okay, it wasn't, it wasn't modeling, it wasn't singing, it no. wasn't no, no, no volleyball, track, no. it wasn't nothing. Well, I ran track in high school and I wasn't good enough. I played, I ran track and played basketball in, in high school, but I wasn't good enough and I knew that. And I was like, all right, so what else can I do? But I always talk. Teachers would be like, I'd always be the student that was talking too much. And you'd be like, can you get your daughter? She talked too damn much. Ain't You're right, ain't nothing changed. Don't let nobody talk, <laughs> run in my mouth. In the back of the class, not paying attention. Um, and then, and I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like, of course, I had, you know, modeling moments and right. wanted to be in videos and stuff growing up here in L.A. Because I, I grew up, I went to UCLA. I went to Pasadena High School. So mm, Shout out I, to Bruins. Yeah. yeah. And, Bruins are the best, no? Mm, okay. We haven't been very good lately, but yeah, just, uh, but in just general, to be there, just yeah. the family. <laughs> the, family is, yeah, the family is dope. 
<laughs> so um, then I got my first job in West Virginia. So I drove my little Nissan Ultima to West Virginia to be a reporter. And I was a one-man band. So you see how, like, they got their cameras and tripod? That's what I was doing. Running around West Virginia, filming stories. It was hella racist. I, people would call me the colored lady. But I loved mm. what I was doing. I didn't care. Like, you didn't care that you was making $2 an hour and you look crazy on TV. I was telling stories and I was living my best life. And I was like, look, this is what I... This is what I've always wanted to do. They didn't know the colored lady was a compliment. Hi. I was like, hey, thank you. I'll take it. I wasn't mad at it. I was just loving life. And then what you do is when you work in local news, you just work your way up. And then I got fired in Atlanta. That was like market. I think there's like 200 markets, right? So Atlanta was like top 10 market. And I got fired when I was there because I was just being me. And uh, what that means is I have a lot of fire in my belly. <laughs> so as I'm you a, should. As, and so you, but there's a way you go about it, right? Because mm. I, I had never lived outside of LA. So really living in Atlanta, and you know how it the is. South. Right. I was like, wait, oh, this is oh, this is totally what this is. Different. It's totally different. I had to learn. It was on the job training, um, and it was the best thing that ever happened to me because I had to I had to reboot. I had to change my trajectory, and I went into sports and I started working in tennis. And that's all she wrote. I flew myself out to ESPN. Like every job I get, I hustle. Ain't nobody been like, mm -hmm. you know what, brown girl, let me fool with you. Mm -hmm. You so heavy. Like you so bad. Let me. No one does that now. But it, everything I've ever gotten literally has been on my own. And I flew myself out to ESPN and was just knocking on doors. And then they were like, okay, we'll get back to you. And then I would just keep calling and keep calling. I just check in, send my resume reel, check in. And one day they called and they were like, you want to host this show called First Take? And I was like, y'all bullshitting. Mm -hmm, and they were like, mm -hmm, no, mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. real. Like, do you want to host this show? And I'm like, well, what about the guy who, you know, Jay Crawford was the host at the time mm -hmm, in Dana. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait, where? And they were like, oh, they're moving on, da, 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 da. And I was like, okay. So I go out do the audition, literally auditioning with Skim and Stephen A outside of me. So I'm I'm nervous, but I'm pretending like I'm not nervous. Stephen A are making nervous. Yeah, but in general, I don't like know them. I don't know nothing about it. But they were in the show, they yelling back and forth. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, are they going to yell at me? What's, what's the... <laughs> So I'm reading the prompter, and so they do a series of things, right, just to throw me off. So I'm reading the prompter, and I'm teeing, teeing them both up with questions and stuff. And then the prompter just goes off. And then they just they want me to go from the script from memory. Mm -hmm. They just turn the prompter off, like, to see if she can, can she, she ad-lib, right. can she freestyle, mm -hmm. can she do it on her own. And I, I kept my cool, and it was a wrap. Mm -hmm. So um, I killed that shit. Mm -hmm. I swear on my life. I was like, I killed it. Then I remember talking to... A friend of mine and I said, I did great, but I'm black. I'm not going to get it. Mm. And she was like, what? I was like, they're not looking for no black girl to host that show. They're looking for a blonde. Like, what are you talking about? Mm. I remember just having this honest conversation. Like, I might be freelancing and be working for the Lakers or something. Like, this is just my thought process. I said, if they call me by a certain time, which was like two weeks later, because um, I was going to, I was working at the Tennis Channel, and I said, if they call me by the U.S. Open and say, hey, you're going to be here in New York, can you come up? I got the job. So, no call, no call. It's been two weeks, no call. Um, Y'all already know how the story go, obviously. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, like, I was flying out on Monday, and they called me on Saturday and said, can you come and, one, meet Jamie, who was hiring at the time, at, at the U.S. Open, and then, two, can you come up to the studio one more time and do an audition again? And I was like, okay, and that's all she wrote. It was a wrap. It's done. Can you believe that shit? That's dope. Mm -hmm. That's a crazy. Right, but that's why I always tell people, like, just hustle. Like, nothing comes to you. I can't right. stand that people want to. I, nothing. I flew myself out there. Mm -hmm. I stayed in the little uh, broke down Bristol Hotel. Not the nice one that they got now, the Double Tree, but it was even more broke down than that. Mm -hmm. I, I probably, I'd have no money. Like, I was just, I had whatever I had, and I just paid for myself to go there and back. Mm -hmm. And I was there for two days, just sitting in the lobby, waiting for right. people to meet me. No, I had no planned meetings. I was like, okay, whoever wants to come see me, I'll wait. I wait, and then that was that, and I got the job, and then my entire life changed. Like mm -hmm. I was like, wait, why is it? Why is everybody tweeting me? Why do? Why? Because you know those aggressive ass fans they have. <laughs> they were so mean. They were like, you, I was like, what? What's what's happening? And then what did I do? I was exactly, right. exactly. What was no, good? We talked a little bit the other day when I was able to host Sports Center, and that was one of the things you told me. You know, because uh, you know I just signed a deal with ESPN, and I'm going to start being doing that more. She's like, well, you need to go to Bristol. You need to sit down and knock on these doors. That's you need it. to take these lunches. You need to take these dinners. She's yep. and she was kind of laying it out, and uh, I think it was dope. You know what I mean? Because I think. You know, once they let us in, it's yeah, a and, and they're kind of scared because we're, you know, we're good at it. You know what I mean? They're like, uh, oh. Uh, they're like, wait a minute, what's happening? Wait, what, what where'd we, you what, come from? What's going on? <laughs> what's going on? Tell me some of the difficulties you faced, first and foremost, being a woman, but then being a woman of color on, on your journey to the top. I think 
just the obvious stuff. I think I'm always in a room and I'm the only one like now, right? It's always just, and it's a lot of male energy. And if <clears throat> it's a lot of male energy and if you're not comfortable, that's intimidating and it takes a long time to be yourself. I think working, especially, I, I have so many lessons just from first take. When I was on first, I'd be the only one in the room and then they'd be like, here are your thoughts. And I'd be like, <clears throat> nervous, armpits wet. And then I just finally was, I, you get so, and y'all know how it feels. I don't know what, how it would translate in basketball. You get to the point where you just don't care anymore and you just yourself and you just so like take it or leave it. Mm -hmm. And it got to the point where I was, there were so many no's and that doesn't make sense. And don't get me wrong, I wasn't I didn't know much about a lot of different sports. I knew basketball, but I had to learn football. I had to learn a lot of different things. And it was on the job training. And I would, you know, they would look past you. Like a lot of the times when I was, you know, first take, people would look past you. Like or or there would be people who didn't address you, they just addressed them. I it's I mean, I can count so many times I was embarrassed daily. I was daily embarrassed or humbled. And it and I'm not gonna lie. I remember uh, picking up. <laughs> I remember picking up Jamel one day. I keep throwing her back because that was my dog, and I had um, <laughs> I had a some champagne in my my cup. You're not supposed to drink and drive, guys. And so I picked her up and I'm like, I quit. And she was like, What? <laughs> I had been there like a year. She's like, What? I was like, I quit. I'm done. I said, I'm gonna tell him on Monday. And she was like, What's wrong with you? And I was like, I can't do it. It's breaking my spirit. Mm -hmm. I was like. It's, it's cold, it's miserable, I ain't got no friends, no family. And she wasn't living there at the time. I was like, it's just hard, because the shit's hard. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, every day you get up, you get dressed, you do your best, and somebody's telling you you're not doing your best. How do you, how do, you deal with that? Right. You know, how do you, how do you keep finding your encouragement? And then I just had to dig deep because I'm not a quitter. But I, but I tell you, it was it was close. It's hard when the, when the odds stacks against, stacked against you. It's hard. It's hard. It's, it's hard, hard to find your motivation. It's hard to trust anybody because you can't trust anybody, right? And then you find yourself in a situation where you're like, how do I keep getting up, dealing with this every day, being told? And at the time, you have to understand, like that show was, like off the. It's still popular, but it was off the charts with those two. Mm -hmm. And then I had people telling me on social I wasn't nothing and I got you know and I'm sitting in this cold place trying to find my footing like I want to do something else because I can't really talk on the show like it was just tough um and then I just I, I it's perseverance you just push through I was determined I was like after I had my little my little breakdown my little emotional breakdown and um I just was like, I gotta figure this shit out. And I did. And it ended up working in my favor and none of it has been easy. But when you know, when you get to a certain level, none of it's supposed to be easy. Right. None of it's supposed mm -hmm. to be easy. All of it's supposed to be hard. And if it's not hard, you're not working enough. So I'm okay with all of that. Tell me what it was like having to pay your dues in Bristol and then finally being, coming back to California where you're from and now you're. I was, I, you know what, it was weird. I didn't even know I was coming back. They, they were like, hey, I think we're going to create a show called Coast to Coast. You want to go back home? I was like, I thought they was playing. I was like, what, y'all being funny? And they're like, no, I'm serious. And it was great because when I, he, here's the thing. Okay, Michael Smith told me this a long time ago. When shout I first, out Mike. Shout out to Mike. That's Ooh, our dog, right? We Ooh, love him. Ooh. So when I first got to, <laughs> I'm just giving y'all all the business. When I first got there, <laughs> I had been there for about maybe a, a year and a half, maybe two. And we were going to maybe it was a Super Bowl, we was traveling somewhere. And I was walking around with Mike and um, people were stopping me and asking me for my autograph or to take a picture. And it was like other athletes or just people in general. And I was I was so shocked. I was like, wait, oh, they're asking, they're asking for to take a picture with me. This is when I had just had been, in, been at ESPN for two years. And Mike turned to me, he was like, oh, Oh, you still in the I ain't shit bubble, huh? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? He was like, oh, you still think you ain't shit? Oh, they got you. Oh, okay. They got you. And he was like, they got you. You need to get like he sh like shook me, and he was like, you have to understand where we live and where we work is not real life. He mm -hmm. was like, you're doing your thing, and if nobody tells you, I'm here to tell you. So you got to get out of that bubble because you're just you're like this. Right. And then uh, I come to LA and I was like, oh, wait, okay. And the people, I was like, oh, okay, maybe, maybe, okay, I'm shit. Like, you know, yeah, but I'm still humble about yeah. it, but like, okay, it, which was good for me, right? Because I want, I wasn't trying to, you don't want to get too high or too low. You just want to be like this. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get too high or too low. So you can't be too hard on yourself, but you can't think you just shit, shit, shit. So I was just right here and it was mm -hmm. easy. You were just shitty. You yeah, was I was just shitty. shitty. I wasn't like shit, shit, shit. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> and so we just, I mean, we had a good time. And when I came here, I had all these other opportunities. Um, I got to work with a lot of people that were nice. Um, and then, you know, you, 
you just you I'm from here, so you mm-hmm. have to you have to understand. Like I measure it. I don't I'm not out here like you know, we Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, like I, people are famous, but mm-hmm. I don't, I don't trip off that. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay. Cause when you grow up here, like you go out of your way to act like you don't see famous people. Like it's yeah. just like, all right. It's, it's normal. Right. Mm-hmm. You're like, okay, cool. Whatever. Mm-hmm. That's fine. That's not a big deal. Go magic. Whatever. I ain't tripping. <laughs> Although I did trip when I first met magic, but yeah. That's dope. Some of your favorite moments in sports. Uh, what makes you feel rewarded? We know you talk to a lot of people. You've done a lot of a lot of work in the space. What makes you feel rewarded like, out of all the work you've done? I like good stories. I like just telling really good stories. I like to see people win, not just physically win, but win in general. So, like, um, there's so many. Uh, okay, so a personal story, like, everyone asks how much you love sports. So, growing up here, I was always a Laker fan, right? Besides uh, all of... DMs and, and texts yeah, you no, get about, no, about, yeah, about, no, about, no, about how, no, how good you did. look and how we praise you. <laughs> Let us know what <laughs> makes you feel rewarded besides that. I get no DMs. I said we should do a show man, called I, DMs. Man, I, I don't get any DMs. Please. Everybody on your page, all those guys be on your page now, praising you, Carrie. I, I read get, it all day. Yeah. I read it all day. Guys, cut. No. <laughs> I read it all day. <laughs> But what, 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 but what makes you feel good though about like, your work? When I when I can do a story about somebody who we had a kid, and what I think is really important now, I'm knowing that a lot of black men are dealing with a lot of personal issues, right? And in sports, you guys don't talk about it, but it's becoming more and more common that black men are talking about how they're dealing with depression mm. or how they are struggling, and how it's really hard to live a life that so many different people want them to live. Like, I don't even think people understand the pressure that it takes. They think, oh, you, you can catch a football, you got all this money, you should be happy. You could you could dribble a ball, put it through the back, oh, you should be happy. But they don't understand how they grew up or what they're dealing with, the mm-hmm. other side, and people constantly asking for something, mm-hmm. money, mm-hmm. people, whatever. Y'all know better than anybody. <laughs> yep. So for me, I've always felt bad for the athletes. Like, I've, I've had an empathy. And now that I can see and be able to help and witness that a lot of these these young boys, even grown men, are coming out saying, I need help. I'm struggling. Life is hard. I'm not as tough as I'm trying to make y'all feel. Like, I don't mm-hmm. care how much money I got, how many chains I got, how many broads I, I got. I cry. I cry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shit's hard. Like, I'm, I'm having a mental breakdown. Today's tough. Um, and we were able to do a story with one athlete. <laughs> And the fact that he said he was getting help and starting to get help and feeling a little more, a little more easy, not thinking about taking his life, those kind of messages mm-hmm. that I get are rewarding. Like that, that's what we're here to do. We're here to help and tell really great stories. Like, of course, there's the fun stuff, but to me, that's huge because in our community, you know, well, you're, you're supposed to be tall, be strong, be strong, be strong. That's what you like. Like this, be strong. But it's okay to say I'm not strong. It's okay to say I hurt. Like my, my mind's not right. Like yeah, they've been <laughs> teaching, they've been teaching us to be strong and be able to take so much, but they don't teach being real with yourself enough. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Standing in the mirror. And that's when you start to turn the corner when you're being real with yourself. Yeah, you can be tough as hell, but you got to be real with yourself mm-hmm. when you're dealing with life and everything you're going mm-hmm. through. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't live, yeah. don't live by a facade. Be real with yourself and that'll make it's it a lot easier. It's hard for everybody to be real. Right. It's hard. Like, because you don't want people to, like, men are in general, in my opinion, hard, they don't, they're not expressive. Right. It's very few men like to talk about their feelings. You want to go in a cave and figure it out. So then you want me to turn around and tell you that I feel weak and I haven't figured it out and I'm vulnerable and all these emotions that you're just not familiar with that make you feel like somebody could take advantage of you mm-hmm. in a world where people do nothing but take advantage of you. Mm-hmm. Everybody's asking you for money. Everybody need a new house, new car, new this, new that. Mm-hmm. You don't know if she really likes you for you, right? You got and you and sometimes you indulge in all of that. But it's all a facade because you go home and you're tired and you're weak and you, and you drained. Gotta, you drained. You mentally and physically drained. And now that I'm starting to see so many of these guys talk about it um, in a much more, you know, eloquent way without feeling like someone's going to make fun of them or mm-hmm. they won't have the same respect in the locker room, to me, is rewarding because that's the turn. That's mm-hmm. the turn we are seeing in sports. <clears throat> we haven't seen that. That's the turn and it's beautiful. Yeah. I love it. What's the most positive and negative aspects of or the effects I've had on your career, positive and negative, through social media? The, the positive of social media and the negative of social mm-hmm. media. Life you, and career. Because, I mean, you you know, working for who you work for, right. it's 
You really have to monitor Ooh. yourself. Oh my god, yeah, that's that's a negative. Like some days, I I want to be on there. Like so, so like I'll I'll follow you guys. <laughs> Stack too. He'll be like cursing. I'm like, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> or like, you know what I mean? That's just the freedom. When I see people tweet free, I'm like freedom. Like I want to <laughs> say what they're saying. Or when things are happening, I'm like that. That would be my tweet. Yeah, I, you know, whatever. Or I like it, but. I think the negative is that I'm not allowed to, which is a good and a bad. I'm not allowed to, in my opinion, I police myself on what I say. Because 140 characters, like, you can't really get out. Or even more than that, you can't really have a nuanced opinion. And everybody thinks their opinion matters. So I don't really delve into Twitter. I think social media um, has made everybody feel like they're missing out on something. Or right. they, or that person's life is better. Or they want that. Or how come they don't have that? Or why is she winning or he winning and I'm not winning? Those are the things that I think will ultimately... Um, take its toll on you. Sometimes I just got to tap out. Like I just, I, I can't even be on it. Um, I think the beauty of it though, is that if you have something special to share, or you are, you want people to know who you really are. You can mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like sometimes you guys post and I'm like, Oh, I can tell that's who Matt is, or I can yeah. tell that's who Stack is, mm -hmm. or yeah. you can really show a side of you that people may not be able to get by just listening to you on the podcast or mm -hmm. seeing you for two minutes on sports center. <clears throat> and, um, and so I use that to my platform. Like I sell, I sell certain things that I want people to know other you know but I'm very look I don't know I'm very private like I, social media is mm -hmm. for my benefit mm -hmm. you know and that's what I I've chosen to be that way right. so I'm gonna be like oh you ain't got no that's why you ain't got no man that's why you gonna ever be if you know that's a plus though because you know sometimes <laughs> Words that, that, that when people hear stuff come out your mouth, they can't twist that. But you can type something on Instagram, and they automatically gonna twist it. So oh, it's sure. good you don't do that. Yeah, it's nobody's it's good business. You don't do that. And I nobody's think that, I mean, I think you touched on it perfectly I mean, for for Jack and myself. Is you know we were labeled this one way our whole career mm -hmm. for different reasons, mm -hmm. uh, and we just took advantage of being that, and it got us 14 year NBA careers and championships and money. But I think the platform of of Instagram in particular is just you know showing the other side, you know, the father, the charitable side, mm -hmm. the coach, who I really am, spe speaking free without be worrying about being fined by the NBA, like you right. said, with your ESPN stuff. So yeah. it's to really be you and, and, you know, when people are, are real enough to show you who they are, you know, I think people do appreciate that because, like you said, they get a snapshot of you and they yeah. form an opinion of who they think you are and it could be the furthest thing from the truth sometimes. Yeah, and they need to listen. Like, I think if people follow you, they're going to pay attention. They're like, wait, hold on. I see another side. I remember, can I tell a story when I met y'all both? Mm -hmm. Separate instances. I met you when I was working um, on First Take and we were on the road in San Antonio and you were a guest on the show. Yes. And and you were, I think maybe they, I think. I just got released by him. Yeah. Yeah. And you were like, pop is tripping. Like you kept it 100% funky. <laughs> he was like, I yeah. should be on the team or whatever. You were really nice. I thought you, no, I wouldn't call you nice. You were very professional and you were very much about your business. And I thought to myself, like, because we did another interview with you afterwards and you were talking about, I guess you had an album come out. Oh, or, yeah. Yeah. yeah and we that. were talking to you about that. And I just thought, okay, he, he's he got layers. I don't think everybody <laughs> right. knows. Yeah. Like, you were very, very, like, I didn't I didn't say the town you were from, right? And you made sure you were like, Port Arthur, you got it wrong. Like, yeah. you was like, yeah. I was like, all right, my bad. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought to myself, I was like, that's nice. And you were just very professional. I didn't, I didn't get like... I didn't get DM stack like yeah. so, you know. Slime. Yeah. I was just like I appreciate yeah. him. Like I appreciated that because I felt like that was like a mutual respect. I met Matt. You I, you were on my podcast, my my podcast. Mm -hmm. Be honest, and it was right after we we mm -hmm. tell we tell the story often. Mm -hmm. um, can I tell it? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> it was when he was maybe dating Rihanna at the time, or y'all had just got done dating. It was no dating situation. Okay, well, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's what the whole gist was, and she was one of the people like, hmm, let me, hear, <laughs> let me, let me get this. Let me get this. So they were connected somehow, some way. I guess some TMZ came up to you and asked you something. Some, yeah, some yeah something shit. like that. And we, I had you on the podcast, and I asked you about it. And you're like, that's my friend or whatever. And you were very, I felt at the time, because somebody had, I guess, you know, said that on Rihanna's behalf that y'all didn't know each other and you were talking about it and this was the first time I ever really believed a dude because I'm like look at Rihanna everybody gonna tell you <laughs> they're all these dudes lying saying they dating her they ain't dating her they like her whatever but then you start telling the story I was like oh no he's telling the truth he's, I was, he's, you he's just, very believable yeah I because he could be lying he's no, very he's believable, believable. Okay. He's, believable. he's believable now <laughs> so I was like oh 
I was like, that's unfortunate. But you were real chill about it. And mm-hmm. I was, again, another instance where I was like, he's not at all what I thought. So mm-hmm. I think it's really important that people have these moments. Mm-hmm. Like, I try not to judge people unless I experience them right. myself. Like, right. I got to experience you. I got to sit with you. I got to mm-hmm. talk with you. People can look at me and say whatever they want, but I want them to sit with me and experience me before they judge me. I vibe my match. Yeah. yeah. Energy, yeah. same thing. I want to take you back to 2014, kind of still dealing with social media and with that the clown Artie Lang tweeted about you. And what was what did you learn from that and in, in kind of now that you are someone that's looked in at a certain light and there's people that just are crazy and disrespectful his out new, there. His new name is Fuckboy. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not new. It's, it's, it's been it's his been. name. It's been his yeah. name. Um, we were, um, the, yo, that was crazy. Because <clears throat> I never ever, I've never really talked about that. Uh, we were doing a show and um, you know how you check your your social media during, we always check during mm-hmm. commercial break. And I was like, what? It was just like these series of tweets and I was just, I thought it was, I don't know, I don't know what I thought it was. And then I, um, when I went to our guy who runs social media um, at the time and I was like, I said, is this real? And he was like, yo, this dude is crazy. And I was like, yeah, like, this is, and here's the funny thing. I used to be a big fan of Howard Stern. He used to be on the show. Mm -hmm. And I used to like listening to him on Howard Stern. And I just thought, I was like, why does this white man think it's funny to make jokes about slavery? Like, I was like, how are we, how are we 2014, whatever? I was just like, this is crazy. This is, and I'm like on a platform. Right. I was like, would he, if I didn't look the way, I, if I was blind, would this be funny? Like, would he, what, what joke would he make? Like, if you not, say something like that, how quick you, you gonna get fired? So quick. Right. I wouldn't even have an opportunity. And um, I remember, you guys are gonna laugh at this story. I remember going to a couple of folks like in house and they kind of just was like, just like, like, don't worry about it. Like, can nobody give a fuck? They was just like, oh, don't tough. worry about it. Yeah. Shake it off. <laughs> and it really, it if it, it really hit me. Like I was like, yo, like no respect. Mm-hmm. Like, damn. Like I worked this hard and you I'm still getting back, disrespected. Right. Nobody has my back. CC wanted to come out. Huh? Oh man, I was like, this is, you got to weigh the pros and cons. Do I have enough right. in the savings? And then I was like. I remember your girl. We keep talking about her, Miss Hill. She sent out this these series of tweets. She's good at those. So you know she's good at that. She She'll st- drop them bombs. And she can stab you with her <laughs> She'll words. She'll stab you with her words. And so she just started light. I mean, literally lit him up. I remember going home because I lived in Bristol by myself, just turned off my TV, turned off my phone, and I just went to bed because I was tired. I was like, I was emotionally Mentally drained. Yeah. I was just like, I'm just, damn, this shit is so hard. Why is it so hard? And then I woke up and I was trending. I was like, what the, what? I didn't know what the hell was happening. And apparently, like, it became this thing. Like, people had came, people out of the woodwork just went at his head and he was, and then people started to pay attention. That's the power of social media you were talking about. Then mm-hmm. people started to say, okay, this fool's a clown. And then it started to get talked about. And then it was like think pieces and it was on all these different shows. And they were like, he's banned from ESPN. He can't come on here anymore. And he, I, he apparently had a friend who tried to reach out to me to tell me he was sorry. I wasn't even listening. But at the point, at that point, it had become so bad do you remember the movie 12 Years a Slave? Y'all remember mm-hmm. that? That movie was out. And this is how cruel social media is. Do you remember the, the campaign for it? It was a slave, right? He was running or something, running, right? right. Mm-hmm. People have they put my face. It. Can you? I don't want to laugh. I don't want to laugh. I don't want to laugh. <laughs> Can you laugh. believe that? That's crazy. That's crazy. And I was like, yo, how disrespectful is this? Like a bunch of people were sending me that, like defending him, like having his back. And I was like... What world do we live in mm. where that's okay? Like none of this is okay. And then, and I just never talked about it because I was just so hurt. I was really hurt. Cause I was just like, that's like, as a woman who is respected, also I thought, or this, you know, I'm sitting here doing my job, minding my business. I was like, why is that okay why, for this white man me, to right. do that and still treat me this way or treat us this way or have this image of us? Well, none of that's funny. None of that's funny. Mm-hmm. And so, it just became this whole to do and everybody, you know, we already know what happened to him. Yeah. Well, speaking kind of in this realm and, and, and with the treatment that you guys get in this space, you know, Gabby is going through it right now. We talked about yeah. Alf Kramer, how proud of her you are yeah, and, yeah. And, and what she's doing. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? I just, I just sent her a message. I said, well, she obviously got let go from this show, right? She got let go from, um, America's Got Talent. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you don't have to renew somebody's contract. We know that's na- the nature of the business. No one's entitled, right? But you would think if you do your job and you do it well, mm-hmm. 
You get rewarded. And she did that. Right. So how do you, like, she? we're watching all these people, you know, fail upward and she's succeeding downward. Like, how? What? Mm. why is she not being mm. brought back, right? So she's just frustrated. I remember just being like, I'm so frustrated. I don't know what's going on. I'm so frustrated, which I understand. And then she was like, what should I do? And I remember her just really thinking it through. Because you have to realize, and she's talked about it later, no matter what, especially with women of color, no matter what, you could whisper and your voice is still too loud for a world that never intended to hear it. You could whisper. You could just say, hey, can I talk to you and use all my happy words? I'm uncomfortable with this. And it's still a problem. Mm -hmm. And so she was tired. Like her quote, not mine, I'm tired of being a happy Negro. I'm, I'm tired of just being here. And the response to what she's dealing with in terms of how people have had her back has been overwhelming because normally you, it just gets you know pushed to the side. And it may, who knows? Because she knows the end result of her speaking up and saying what she said could end up with her not having another type of job like that again, mm -hmm. right? It could, and, and people are like, well, she got a rich husband, but that's, no, that's... That's not the point. That right. ain't the point. Right. Like, if you know her, she want to work hard, she got her own money. And it's also the fact of the respect. Like, I've, I've been in this business for so long, are we still doing this? Mm -hmm. Like, at the bottom line, like, I'm like, I've been nothing but professional. I handle myself accordingly. I show up on time. I go above and beyond. I'm twice as good as everybody else. I, why, why am I not getting the respect? Mm -hmm. When do what, do, what do I have to do? Mm -hmm. And so... I was really proud of her because for us, a group of women have talked about it. It's happening in real life. It's like 3.0. I've never seen anybody do what she's doing and then get the support. Usually it happens and then there's a pushback. Right. They're mad at you. You can't work no more or mm -hmm. no one's writing about it or no one's applauding you and saying, good for you. Thank you for standing up. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And it, I mean, it's beautiful for yeah. us. It's right. beautiful. And it's, it's big. It's not falling on deaf ears anymore. Yeah, you know what right. I, mean? I think right. for so long it fell on deaf ears. Like no you said a lot. You like they don't want you to speak in the first place. So, so if you do, up. you know. But it's people are, are. You know, I just think we're like power of social media. You know, what I mean, it's really the power of social media. You know, when you start, you know, because I spoke to her too after it happened. She's, you know, so it's like, you know, you know, I freely speak. I was like, whatever you need me to post, let me know. I got you. you know, oh, I love you, that. You want to come on the show? And she's like, I definitely want to come on the show. But it's just like you, you get allies, and, and now we all have a voice. That yeah. not only certain people have a voice. Yeah. So now we can start attacking. Yeah. Or, or at least fire back. Yeah, I want and I want that freedom. What you need me to post? That's where right. I'm going. That's where I'm moving. That's my next okay. level. What That's you need what me I'm to post? About. You'll be there soon enough. <laughs> On a brighter side, huge, huge, huge UCLA and Laker fan, but particularly Lakers. Uh huh. Talk to me about that. I love the Lakers, y'all. Not just because, like, we know. I, but not just because they're like you guys have to. Okay, family. I'm gonna give y'all the whole background. I don't know if we, you know those stories. Let's get the breakdown. Here's the break. Okay, so my grandmother grew up in the segregated South. This is you know I was gonna bring in my grandma. She grew up in the segregated South. My she, mom. She 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 played basketball right at an all black school in Magnolia, Arkansas, and so when her mother moved to California. She left secretary school and came here and became a Laker fan right away. Now, my grandmother can't drive. This is a funny story. Still alive. Amazing lady. But she would want to go to these Laker games, but no one wanted to go with her or drive her. So she would catch the bus to the farm. And when was who would this go with her? Time frame. Like 80s. Okay. And who would go with her? I don't know what was going on, but it was me. Mm -hmm. And I'd be right there with her, just sitting there in the nosebleeds. And showtime. she's like, yeah. You got to see Showtime. I, but I didn't really didn't know, know what, right. was, what right. was happening, but right. she's like explaining the game to me and how much she loves the Lakers and, and this, that, and the third, and AC Green, and da 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 da. She loved him. He was so cute because he had Jerry Curl. Like, it was all these, <laughs> it was all these stories. She loved magic. Like, it was all these stories worthy. Like, I could go down the list. Right. Cooper and his socks, and she would just be talking about it. That's all she ever talked about when we was a kid. Oh, when I when she watched us, that's because she would always watch us because my mama was working. So she would watch us, all she ever talked about. And at one point, she would take we used to have these family photos that were framed up all around the house. Of course. And whenever she got to meet one of them and they signed it, they she... They went right in there. Yeah. <laughs> don't, she... don't care what grandbaby coming out. That's Maggie Johnson. <laughs> right. That is a fact. Right. And so our pictures would come out one by one and it'd be all the Lakers. You'd be like, damn. You related to the whole Lakers team? <laughs> I was like, we're, we're, no love, mm -hmm. right? You could, it, Literally black and white photos of uh, Magic, of AC Green, Coop, whoever she met, like right. who, whoever she caught the bus to meet, like literally, she would get on the bus to meet anybody wherever they were signing. Because back then it was easy. You could just, mm -hmm. they sign in here, show up mm -hmm. at the warehouse or whatever. Mm -hmm. So 
obviously. I became a Laker fan. And it was right, you know, when they were battling the Celtics and we would just sit and watch and she was so into it. So I had to be into it. So, cause that was it. Like I was, just, I was literally at her knee all the time. That's all I ever knew. And so it, it went all the way back to there. And then of course my fandom is just even more crazy. So Kobe, Shaq uh, mm-hmm. amplified. And then when they, when Kobe and Shaq were battling, it was like, the city was divided. You remember it was like, mm-hmm. who you were? You were Shaq, you were Kobe. Right. It was, before, it was like know, East West Coast beef. It was yeah. crazy. Cause you was just like, who'd you, I, you know. Who was you with? I, well, at the beginning, I was with Shaq, of course. Everybody was with Shaq. Uh, initially. Initially, uh-huh. everybody was with Shaq. Because everyone start bringing the chips back. Yeah, yeah, hello. And they were like, well, hold on. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> let's just, let's not rush to judgment. Right, <laughs> I right. can understand you wanting a trade. <laughs> you know, remember, he was all right. bad, right? And then, then, this is my, um, the whole thing is like, Laker fans are ridiculous because we're spoiled. Crazy. Like we're spoiled and we always been in conversation. And so when we don't, I, I even have to admit this. I used to talk so bad about LeBron, like so bad. Like I'd be like, ah, he ain't got it. I know I'm mad. I told myself, LeBron and I have had this conversation. I was like, I ain't shit. I was wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, I did not like you. I was like, but welcome. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Let me welcome. know if you need anything. Right. Let me, what, welcome to the family. Right. We have, have right. you. But he Come was just like, yeah. he was like, all Laker fans hated me because because of Kobe. And you know why? Mm-hmm. Because as LeBron started to ascend, we felt like people didn't give Kobe his his just True. due. Right. We felt like it went from Michael Jordan to LeBron. You're like, wait a minute, what it's Michael Jordan, Kobe. Kobe. They still yeah. skip over Kobe. Kobe. Mm-hmm. So they still do, right? And so we take it, we took it so Real personal. Yeah, like I it still was do. Yeah, so personal. <laughs> like you be ready to fight. And I thought to myself, I said, okay, I understand why now. And I think, look, I mean, look, if somebody Put some true serum in Kobe. He say the same thing. Like, why right. do you don't don't skip over me, mm-hmm. like at all? But the reality is, is that when you're just such a fan, that's how it was. And so, and at the end, you just want to win. Like, mm-hmm. I, I I just it kills me because you know fans are so fanatical. They're crazy. They went nuts on me that one time I faked the ball in Kobe's oh, you, face. Oh, people wanted to real like I was getting death threats. Of course. Like you know what I mean? And 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 the uh, I didn't the, like you. The Latino population <laughs> was on my head. Like you know, Dodgers and Lakers, they'll kill for Kobe and they'll kill for the fucking Dodgers. So it was really like that summer, like shit was crazy, but it ended fast because that's the summer Kobe had called me, like, yo, come anyone cares, you know, to fuck with me, come play with me. Uh-huh. So then I came to the Lakers and then all the, the, the Mexican people looked because they thought I was Mexican. Mm-hmm. So they thought, man, we got a we got a Mexican homie on the Lakers mm-hmm. now. And I would do my signings and <laughs> they would and, and I finally I tell like I'm not I'm black and Italian. Yeah, you know like, what I mean? But they still <laughs> but it was you crazy t- because the You gotta Mexicans tell that from, story when you said they would you like, oh we have to take out one of our own. Yeah, <laughs> no, nah, they, nah, they, for real, they they thought they were gonna have to take out, you know, they have to take out one of the, you know, someone of their own blood. You know what I mean? Like they wanted, they were wanted off with my head. You know what I mean? And then I ended up becoming a Laker right after that. But you make your little Pedro jokes, but they really thought I was Mexican. Yeah. So they was on, they were at my, they were like, we'll kill you when we <laughs> see you in the summer. And I was reading, I was reading these tweets in like a Mexican like. Essay voice. voice, like we'll kill you, Holmes, when we see you type shit. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. But then right after that, we like I said, that. and then like, and I, I talked to her about. She said, "No, we didn't fuck with you at all. At oh, all, at all. At it was all. crazy. It was rude. How do you separate your fandom and your professional I, career? I, I absolutely do not. <laughs> <laughs> you ever catch me on TV? I absolutely do not. And the reason why I don't, I will tell you this. I think that everybody who ever who works in this in this arena in any capacity, especially if they haven't played. But if you work, you you have your teams. Right. Like you love your teams. Like you know, I you know Stephen A. loves the Knicks. He'll talk mm-hmm. about how or his Steelers or I, you know my my co-host David Lloyd loves the Cowboys. Like everyone talks about their team that they love, and it's okay. So no, I don't separate it. I I I don't separate it one little bit. I love it. What. Well, I, I like it because, like I said, you've always spoken freely. And Dwight's first go around with Ooh. the Lakers, you let him know how you feel, 1,000%. and then he let you know how he feels. Yeah, it was and then uncomfortable. You guys, tell that though, because people might not know. And then you guys sat down and squashed the beef somewhat. Um, is it squashed? I don't think it's. Yeah, I mean, I'm not mad at him. But what I thought, what Dwight did, I, I, I'm always ahead of the curve because I said I was like, we don't want him. I don't like all these keep. D12 bill. Remember when billboards they had? Why argue with a woman when there's so many men out there killing you? Why you pick choose a woman to go with? That's kind of weak. That's kind of weak. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you though. If, if, if some women oh, have said you some slick shit to me, you would have came out. You would have heard head. what she said. You, you would have went on. back at her. What, okay. I, no, what did I say? Right. Tell me what I said. I don't remember what you said, but it was crazy at the time. I was like, yo. No, and then he, he came responded. on. He, he came on. Um, he came on Sports Nation when I was hosting it, and 
Um, he said something to me first. Oh, really? Yeah, he said something. So get something. the story right, Matt. Yeah, he said something to me first. I'm not he goes, taking up from what I'm saying. <laughs> a woman with slick mouth sometimes gets talked back to. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, God. See, do you see the world I live in working with men? Do y'all see? Which I'm not afraid. I'm fearless, so I don't care. So he said something like, he was like, but not like some people who don't like me no more. He said something like to that effect, mm-hmm. like re- knowing that I didn't like him, knowing, remembering that I didn't like him. I said, are you referring to me? And I was like, yeah, no, I didn't. And I said, I'll tell you why. I was like, fans were, no, he said Laker fans treated him really bad when he was leaving and he didn't like it. He was like, like some people. And he looked at me and I was why like, do okay. Why care? Right. Because you, like, it just happens. But I get, he wanted, he thought it was going to be funny because you know he's a silly mm-hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. But well, I was I ready for it. Because mm-hmm. I, I t- again, I take everything so personal about my Lakers. And, and I was like, oh, yeah, I wasn't with the shits. I was like, this is why we didn't like you. We felt like you let the team down. We felt like the last few games you were playing, you know, half heartedly, like you didn't want to be there. Then why even play at all? Why even come? Why go through the motions? I just felt like you quit on your team and no athlete should ever quit on their team. Like, I just felt like you get paid to do a job, do your damn job. I don't care mm-hmm. if you don't like what's going on. Leave all your emotions out there. There. Like, no one has time for that. Show up and play. And he was like, no, well, let me tell you what really happened. I wasn't mad at anybody. Mitch Kupchak, and he was talking about the whole, like, how he got ejected. And he just explained it. And we just, I was, but I was with it because I was, I had been waiting. I had mm-hmm. been waiting. I was like, okay, go ahead, sir. Because mm-hmm. I wasn't, I understood that he felt some type of way. And then him and Kobe had beef, you know, so I was just taking up for Kobe. Because <laughs> Kobe's, Kobe needed me to take up for him because he couldn't take up for himself. <laughs> he Kobe had called had, you like, Kobe had called me Carrie, like, can you handle my lightweight? And Carrie, I was like, you got it. Like, kidding. He didn't do that. But it was, I'm not mad at Dwight. I think Dwight actually is really misunderstood now that I see a lot of him. Like, I think that, I think knowing him off camera, I think that um, maturity plays a huge, or lack thereof, plays a huge role in how he handles himself. He's a, he's a big guy, so everybody expects him to be this big, mean guy. But right. he's he totally opposite. He loves life. He's a big, yeah. happy yep. guy. Yeah. Yep. Big, happy Happy dude. go lucky, fun yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, he's a nice guy. He should be a little mean in my book. But yeah, yeah, I yeah. agree with that. You too tall hey, to, to be each too nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, though. Yeah. But no, he's a, he's this, a fine. This, this go around, though, he's playing. I think he's an X Factor. Oh, no. Yeah, huge for sure. Huge addition. I, yeah. And I said it, but when they signed him, because we don't want Dwight. We remember the first time, and I'm thinking to myself, like, this dude knows this is his last chance. Yeah. You know what I mean? He you fuck hustle. up here, you're done. I was mm-hmm. trying to play with him my whole career. With Dwight? Yeah, I was trying to get oh, on his team. I oh, really? played with him in Orlando when he was the shit. People don't really like 09-ish. Oh, he was Superman. Led the league in, yeah. NBA, led the league in uh, all-star votes over Kobe, over mm-hmm. LeBron, yeah. over KD. He was two-time defensive player. Dwight yeah. was incredible. Yeah. And then he, he came to no question. He came to the Lakers and had that back injury, and I think he tried to rush back from that. And people don't take it like people. We talked about this on one of the very first episodes. People don't give. A, if you're on that court, they don't give a fuck what's oh, yeah. behind you nope. and what. Like you got to play. Yep. And, like coming back from a back injury, I saw he went from being Superman to barely being able to jump. And I'm just like, damn. And you just happen to do that on the Lakers stage. He said and you that. Can't, he you said can't that. do that on the Lakers yep. stage. Oh, he was like, might. I had a back injury. Nobody knew I was playing injured. And I'm in. <sighs> We don't like. They don't care. Okay. He's real fans. Don't give a fuck. Been doing my whole That's life. how it is, yeah. right? Welcome. Everybody's injured. Right. Welcome. Everybody's right. injured. Uh-huh. So anyway, whatever. We yeah. all we got we got over it. Yeah, but cool. I did. I was slick. You ain't lying. Yeah. I'm for, I'm hardcore. If you had came on the show that I was hosting after you did that to Kobe, we would have fought. Like I probably would have greased up and put some Vaseline on my face. Uh, I would have been like, "Where are you at? Where are you at? Let's meet up." Yeah, Let's... I would have been like, "You would have been like, is she serious right now? <laughs> right. I'd be like, how dare you attack Kobe like that? I would do Damn, that for crazy. y'all though. Like if right. y'all were like, like if somebody was talking bad about y'all, y'all I, even now." I would do that. So but if y'all was a Laker... call up, uh, the guy that said that about you and tell him we're having a Christmas party. Yeah. <laughs> Just Come have up. him show up to the show lot of cross street, tell him we're going to buy him a Christmas tree. And beat the Pull brakes up. off yeah. him. We I, go love play, I, love I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. LeBron and AD combo. I mean, I love it. Um, I got them winning the championship. You do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I got AD has been Tim Duncan on steroids, and of course, I think LeBron is the best player in the world, but <clears throat> if KD not playing, but... Um, you don't think the Clippers... I, I just think the dynamic of the LeBron being able to do everything and having a player with the cal- the, the caliber player of AD yeah. and what he can do on both sides of the floor and how he can get 40 a night on anybody, LeBron has never had that. Mm-hmm. He's won championships with less. So to have that, I don't I don't think anybody's stopping him. So when LeBron was on, I have to ask you this because this is I, – I'm being honest. Like I get – 
the, the Clippers make me nervous. And you on our show, so don't start asking questions no. like we on your show. No, I'm nervous. Like I'm, I'm nervous. I, I love the Lakers. I agree with what you said, and I, I would like to see him. But I think the Clippers have the upper hand. I don't know if they have the upper. Though they have the upper hand in the sense of like defense. Like I just get nervous. Like I'm like, and then I don't. Well, and of course I don't think Kawhi's 100, but that doesn't really matter at this moment because he they doing this low management, and I'm thinking, okay, so LeBron needs to be low low and managed, Le- or so does AD. Like as how as a fan, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, y'all don't know. Okay, it's December. Chill. Best thing for the Lakers in the world. Worst thing happened for the Clippers. They beat the Lakers early. The best thing for LeBron was he took that and he got a lot of of, of flack when he didn't beat the when he didn't play as hard as Kawhi okay. did that first game. Like Kawhi took the challenge, he guarded them all that. Mm-hmm. LeBron didn't do that. So the next day he was getting killed in the media. Mm-hmm. Ever since then, he'd been on a triple no, double spree. He heard yeah, you. Well, he, 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 he heard you. He was another guy. He was yeah. on his head. He was you know on his mean? head. And I was, that was bad for the league because now he's going to destroy everybody. And I was year. I was someone saying he was no. just filling out his surroundings. I yeah, think I he thought made so a, too. He made yeah. an assertive effort to say, okay, let me see what we got with AD. And it took a little bit for AD to get his feet wet, yeah. but they're rolling now. You know what I mean? They, they, they had a hell of the. The Clippers make me nervous. I don't. I'm Look, I, I'm going to say all day the Lakers are going to be in the finals, but I really want them to manage them. I don't feel like they don't have. LeBron's like, I don't believe in low management. I'm like, you don't have to play every game, dog. Like, I'm all set. Save like, it. yeah, save it. Save, save it. it. This is this. It's too early for all this. Like, I get it, but chill out. I look. I don't know. I think. I think that the way that they're handling Kawhi makes me a little nervous. Like, I'm thinking, okay, maybe he's not 100, but it's smart. Like, they don't need to win every game. They're looking at this right. whole marathon. It's right. not this little not this sprint. sprint right here. It's they got the whole marathon. Right. And, and then it's really going to come down to coaching. Like, can is Vogel coaching or is it? Is it <laughs> okay. Okay. See, <clears throat> there's the answer. Coaching? Huh? Who, who's, kid, yeah. who said? <laughs> That's crazy. You can't give Vogel his respect. Them, Who? boys is, them boys is number one record in the NBA. Yeah, because they got um, one uh, coach of the year over there in Lionel Hollins and they got Jay Kidd right there. That's why. You think Jay Kidd is coaching? I just feel like LeBron and him out there, like we got. I it. like Vogel, like but I just know what too. I just know what guys like J Kid been having him on the bench and having Lionel Hollins, both players, both that been uh, had success in coach. I know what that do when you have a player on the sideline. Uh-huh. That's different. Uh-huh. That's different. If, if you had Kobe on, Kobe on the sideline and Vogel, who your player going to talk to during the timeout? It damn sure not gonna be vulgar. So I'm telling you, having Jake Kidd on that sideline, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm not fighting that at all. I'm, I'm not you. fighting that at all. So you think, kind of like us, that the conference finals would be Lakers Clippers? Yeah, for sure. I and definitely then, think that. Who, I who think you like in the East? Bucks, but I don't know. I feel like I, I feel like they have. You know, Perkins was on the show the other day, and he said something I thought that we don't pay attention to. They kind of have a three. They kind of have a big three with Chris and Bledsoe, like and Giannis. I feel like I don't necessarily know if they, but I mean, to me, that's all I see. Mm-hmm. I, Celtics look good, like, but I don't. I, I, I'm not believing. I, I think just, the Celtics are a piece away. I like Philly. If Philly can figure out what they have, I think losing Jimmy Butler was big, huge. But we'll see. You know, I mean, I, I still like you know Embiid. You know, I don't he, know. And B got called out by Shaq. Yeah, so he got motivated, but I just don't. I don't know. I just feel like they're too mature. I don't think they're there yet. That's Miami need to trade. The maturity. Well, Miami's one piece of white too. One uh, piece. Well, who, play who would they trade for? Who do they, they for? who do they give away? Who do they have to give away? Know. Who do you bring in? What yeah. kind of player? No. Yeah, Miami's but good. Don't, Pat Riley. He'll make something happen. Yeah, Pat, Pat ain't no joke. <laughs> Mob shit. Okay, yeah, so I don't know. I think it'll come down to coaching. I think at the end of the day, like, I think no one's saying anything about Frank Vogel because the Lakers are winning. So if they start losing, he'll probably get more That's heat. That's what I said. What, right. what happens when they hit a two or three game slate? Yeah, we'll happens. start talking about Vogel. <laughs> then we'll say, okay, he doesn't know what he's doing. But I, I, like, I. Slide like, over. Everybody said it's everybody. Everyone, no one's giving him any respect Mm-mm. at all. No Mm-mm. one's giving Vogel any respect. But what about the Pacers team? They, didn't he coach them when they were at their best when they was Jodeci and them? Remember? Did they win anything? No, but they were always mm. in the conference finals. Like yeah, I felt a lot like, of teams compete. But he was doing well with that team. Like wasn't that him <laughs> or was the little boy no. or Roy Hibbert? Like what? I mean, what happened to these guys? Like yeah. I, I, in my mind, I'm like Roy Hibbert was the shit. Then you, yeah. he didn't play any. Where he go? Right, right. He was a Laker for like five minutes. That's mm-hmm. all they needed. That's all they needed Wait, to that's see. That's a good question. Where is it? It's a Where's I Roy? I don't know. Where's Roy? New segment. Who are some of your? Your favorite young players in the NBA right now? I like Donovan Mitchell. Um, I like I like John Morant actually. Who don't? No, but he's actually I like his swag. He's like, a problem. He plays like he believes. It took Zoe so long. I'm talking about Lonzo because I was such a diehard UCLA mm-hmm. Laker fan. It took him so long to believe, and I was like, how do how do you come out believing and others don't? Like Zoe didn't have that. 
And I and everyone say it might be his dad, whatever. I don't know about all that. Mm -hmm. But I just like his it's a lot of these intangibles in terms of how they are off the court, like how they handle themselves, how they how they believe, how they come at these these vests, like I don't care. They're like what two up? different walks of life. You know what? True. How you grow up. <laughs> you right. You right. It means right. it You're means right. something to Ja. You know what? It means something. It's, I'm not saying it don't mean nothing uh, to the other kids. To Lonzo, but yeah. It, it means something to him. Yeah, I like him. I like. Uh, I'm looking. I'm. I, I don't know what's going with Zion. I'm waiting to see what he'll be. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm. That's, that's to me is the. That's the big question mark. We you, this kid slid out of his shoes and everybody waiting to see him play and his knees hurt and is he too big? Had does he need to lose weight? You can't tell. So many I think questions. He does. I think he needs to come down to two sixty five ish. Two eighty five is big, especially for the the the, the rigors and in the length of the NBA season and the travel schedule and the practice. I think we'll see the best. Zion at 265, but it, it'll be interesting once he kind of gets in a rhythm and starts going. I like Trey Young too. A bad team, but I like game. him. Yeah, Lucas I like him. Lucas got a lot. game. Yeah. yeah, there's a handful. It's the, a we, handful. Yeah, we, you know, we spoke, you know, to D Wade a while back, and 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 you know, once LeBron leaves, like I think the NBA is going to be in great hands. Uh, you know, with K you do, yeah. You who's, know, the, who's the next LeBron? K I don't know if there's there, there'll never be another LeBron, but yeah. who's the next big star? KD, Giannis. Luca, I, I gotta go with KD. Yeah, I, I, I was saying before he got hurt. He, KD gonna he be the one the breaking records yeah. and shit. Yeah, I think so. Okay, I think so. It's me exciting to see. I don't know. We'll see. Superstars. Then, mm -hmm. then, then you know, next year we have the Warriors back in rap form. So I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so I have a question. Yeah, here you go. I had a question. Go ahead. You know, I'm gonna ask a question. Go ahead. So why do people think? And I asked you this already. So. When people think about you and they say they see you and they're like, Stag just don't give a, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You say whatever, come to his mind. Do people see what I think I see? The sensitivity of who you are? Like the nice guy? Do you show that to everybody? Your kindness? I think I do. She's going to make a gangster cry right now. Nah, I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I think I do. I mean, I, I try to. I try to be me. I wear my emotions on my sleeve, so... But how you express them is different. How everybody. I express them is very different. Yeah. I mean, everybody don't follow me. So if they follow me on Instagram, they see a totally different side of me. You know, I, I listen to gospel every Sunday on my life. I know. You know what I mean? So people might not know that if they don't follow me. Um, I'm a very emotional guy. Mm -hmm. Very emotional. But you, would, you have to be around me to know that. At work one time, I think it was Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. He brought all the girls a single rose. Rainbow roses. That's all. Just that player Are shit you right there. Well, and it, no, he was very <laughs> no. I was, it was, it was, <laughs> you know what? You trying to hype that devil up, hey. get him going. Yes, a little bit of it was yes. though. Hey. A little bit of it was though. <laughs> little bit was the player in me, but it was, you know, it was Valentine's Day. I was going to work, and one thing about working at the time. All the women there treated me well. You know, I, I spoke to everybody, and that's just the country boy in me and, and being raised by a beautiful woman, my mom. I've always had respect. So working there, you don't see that a lot. Uh -uh. You don't see people doing stuff like that and, and respecting women uh -huh. and saying, hi, how you doing? So I made it a point to do that on, uh, on Valentine's Day, and they loved it. No, not only did they love it, first of all, he don't know this, before... Before he even gave out the roses, the rainbow colored roses, which I thought was so sweet. He walked up to every single girl and gave it to I was like, what kind of sweet little menace society? People don't know that side you? of me, Carrie. People sweet don't know that side of me. Sweet, sweet little sweet menace, menace society. society. <laughs> you little son of a gun, you. <laughs> I was like, what's I like my mouth was open. He was just really sweet. And he's shy too. Like he's there's a shy element to you that people like it sounds crazy. Everything I'm saying sounds crazy to somebody who don't know you. Right. So then, but before he gave out the roses, I gotta put all the girls would be like, he's so cute. He's so cute. They all liked him. He's don't like, tell he's him so that. cute. Because he, 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 he gonna get jealous. He think I'm starting to look good because I've been using this product. <laughs> He don't, he, don't, he don't think I've been, I've been had a little glow on me, man. I've been had a little glow on me. It ain't, it ain't just a pretty boy I missed. But they really, they really see it now. <laughs> anyway. <the laughs> Thank you, though, Karen. The girls loved him. They'd be like, what? What's the situation? I'm like, I don't know. You know, my business. Like, but all the girls right. loved him. Like, makeup. He's talking about he was really nice, all the girls. Because they all loved him. I used to the makeup artist. I used to go in the makeup artist. The ma yeah. He sent me in the makeup room, talked to the girls, and asked them about their day, how they doing. And just well, it's good, because once you, he opens up, the motherfucker will talk your face off. Yeah, oh, for sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? oh, for sure. Your whole goddamn yeah. face all the way off no, onto sure. the ground. You, you ain't lying. Yeah. The girls be like, "Oh, I was telling him about this recipe I made the other day." I'm like, "What?" Talk your face <laughs> off. Talk your face off, man. I will. With you being such a big, you know, voice. Gary got me blushing over here. I love it. You be. 
you blush, like legit blush. You deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> if you wasn't so dark, I'd say your cheeks are a little red. I can't really they see are. them, it's but really I can imagine mahogany. like mahogany. It's like a mahogany underneath color. That <laughs> dark tint. It's like a mahogany underneath color. I need that right dark now. tint that's like a little bit of red. <laughs> your hands probably sweating. Bar color. I, you know. are, you, are your hands sweaty no, right now? Before, before, before they was drinking that, it was bar coming to little baby jar back in the day. Mm. That's what oh, the color is right got now. Got your hands sweaty. I ain't seen you blush, bro. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. No. Dang, uh-huh. Carrie, you got Jack over here blushing uh-huh. and shit. He's blushing. <clears throat> With you being such a prominent <laughs> voice in the sports world, what is your thoughts on the WNBA mm. and the progress and the growth they're trying to make and the equal pay stuff? I feel like the WNBA is kind of suffering from what I was telling you about earlier, about women who feel like they can't talk, otherwise they'll never work again. I feel like it's very... I, I, I feel like most of the women I speak to off-camera want to say more about what's not right. I think... Mm if the men who played in the league or men in positions like you guys start talking about their traveling conditions and how they're being treated Mm -hmm. so poorly, if that became more of a story, then people that have these networks, i.e. ESPN, would talk about it more. Like, I I feel the women don't feel, I know for a fact they don't feel respected. I think it's getting better. But you have this one product in the NBA that is booming, right? Booming. Booming. I don't know what these television contracts are. And you telling me you can't take that model and somehow make it work for, in any capacity, more so than what it is working now, for the women. You're making forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 minimum, right? You're traveling um, in the worst conditions. Uh, you are playing some of your, your playoff games in, in high school arenas. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. And I'd I rather know watch they, Ty Young than watch Otto Porter. Like, seriously. The, and, but the, and have, if you've ever <laughs> yeah, been to, and I don't think a lot of people go to uh, WNBA games, but you've been, yeah. and you go, it's the fundamentals. It's a, cool and you, it's a good yeah. vibe. It's the fundamentals. Yeah. You like it. It's family. It's fun. It's everything. And I think I, what hurts them is athleticism. And if you don't what, understand and appreciate the game. guys in the NBA than me. <clears throat> sure if you don't are. appreciate the game for as a purist, you'll you'll overlook it because of that. Yeah, because you feel like you need to have this. Mm-hmm. I, I want to hear low the rim, make them dunk, hire, whatever mm-hmm. you want to say. I just feel as if, I feel like it's a great game and they're not publicizing it well. I, we buy stuff that we don't even want because of the way it's marketed mm-hmm. in, in everyday life, whether it be clothes, <laughs> shoes, anything. What, Keep anything. the tag in the... In the, in the, in the, in the so how come yeah. you can't market this product? There's no way you can figure out to market this product. Just be like, or do you not care, right? It's mm-hmm. the people who run it. And you have to, and you got to hold people accountable. But it's come a long way, but it's been 20 some odd years. I'm like, yeah. damn. It's been a long time. They got to they start adding, like, I think, like, even with, like, the All-Star Weekend, if they had, like, the women's, they have the women's. Yes. Integrated some type some of way, kind, some you know what I mean, way. to start yes. making people see the game and see the involved and stuff like that. It'll help. They do a little bit with like the, the shooting competitions, but I think yeah, like more, it could be more. Uh, a deeper ingrainment in the NBA game to yes. have, you know. It could be much more. It they could have more. an all-star game that weekend too. Yes, the same weekend. <laughs> Something like that, you yeah, know what before, I mean? Yeah, before they play the all-star game exactly. or have their game, a game in general that mm-hmm. played that weekend. There's yeah. a way to do it. You just have to decide if you want to do they it. They might need to pay you some money to get behind the scenes to help. Listen, I, me, uh, you know our mutual friend, Christine Simmons, we've talked about that in so many different ways. It's just you have to want to change it. And right. I don't necessarily think they want to. It's a lot. It's yeah. a lot too. And I don't think they do. want to. Social issues and having a platform like champion causes. Speak on that. You know, there's there's so much going on in, in, in t- today's society with right and wrong and mm-hmm. police brutality and human trafficking and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Like, because I know all that touches you. You're someone who's very sure. aware of the news. Speak on that. Things that register with me. Um, and it's so funny, I have, and they don't have any particular order, probably a little more passionate about others, um, but I, I don't like the way that uh, black men are treated. Like that's one of, my, one of my big, big issues. I feel like the, the black family is, is, is uh, destroyed in so many different ways. And I feel like they attack the men and as a result, the women are left to do so many different things. Mm-hmm. And then when that happens, you break up this culture and you don't know your history and you don't know where you come from. So that's one of my really big issues. And I like to talk about the idea of black love and us taking care of one another in a, in a much more f- village family type way. Like if you look at different cultures, you look at how the Jewish people or the Italians stay together. Like you go to Italian 20, 30, 40 deep. Like mm-hmm. and I'm pretty sure they have their dysfunction as well. But this this um connection that we don't have or lack thereof is why the women are, you know, like me, where I, I grew up fearless, which is great, but I need a I think I need a healthy fear of male respect, right? Of of my mm-hmm. male, my whether it be my my mate, my husband, my 
boss in air quotes, whatever it is, I think there should be a level of respect there. Mm. And I don't have that because I didn't have my father growing up. So I'd just be in your face, ready to ready to tell Dwight he ain't nothing. You know what I mean? And and Demanding I don't think it. Yeah. And and it's not and it's not appropriate, but it's a I'm a I'm a creature of habit. The the environment product I grew up of your in. Environment, the right. product of my environment. And so the more I get older and the more I realize that that's not necessarily the way to approach life, I understand why I'm doing it. And so I'm trying to I'm trying to auto correct. But I also think at that same turn, I think men don't do that for women, especially for black women. I feel like we're the most unprotected group of people ever, and no one is having our back be, and, and consistently being criticized for us re, you know, behaving the way in which we behave mm. because of the result of our product, right? So mm -hmm. this is a vicious cycle. Right. So it's one of these things that I try to talk about a lot. I'm really big on us just working as a whole for women. Like I think I have so many like interpersonal issues that I found just growing up in this world and growing up at, in this working environment. And they're all about how we interact and how we treat people. Like I, I ultimately, I would, I would love to say that I have great relationships with everybody and I have a good, res healthy respect for everybody. I don't. But one of the things that I think we really should start valuing, which we don't, is just our time and our human and human life. Like we don't spend time appreciating the people we are with. So when I'm teasing you about giving the girls flowers and roses, like, I mean that shit. Like the girls, that's that kind of thing lot. means a lot. You don't mm -hmm. know what somebody's it's a small going through. Thing that means yeah, a lot. you don't know what their day is like. You don't know how that touched somebody's heart. Whether mm -hmm. they had a crush on you or not, stack like those things matter. Mm -hmm. Knowing that somebody sees you and can relate to you and touch you and say, "I, I feel your spirit. You, mm -hmm. you matter." So I feel that's kind of where I'm at. Peace, love, and happiness and joy. That's where I'm at in this in this phase of my life. In, in terms of professionally and issues that matter for me, I want to. I want to transition. I want to go to a new level. Like I like working where I work, but it's time for me. I think I'm getting the itch and it's time for me to be in a place in which I can use my voice in, in, in a much louder way, right? Unapologetically. What would something like that be? Tell me what that is. For me, that is working more in a, a personality realm where I could host different shows or I could... Um, talk about what I love. Like, I love doing this. I know I'm nosy as hell and I ask questions, but that's just a natural curiosity. I'm just in mm -hmm. your business, right? And I want to be able to do more of that. I want to, I definitely want to work in the arena of mental health. Like, that's so huge. Like, I want to be able to tell those stories and how people, and how it's okay to get therapy. And we shouldn't have to pay for therapy. Therapy's mm -hmm. crazy. Therapy is mm -hmm. a million dollars a session. It's just a conversation. It's just, yeah, why am I paying that? You know, I want to be able to be on that forefront. I want to be able to advocate for that because I can, I've seen it change change lives mm -hmm. and I've seen it destroy lives right like in my family I don't know how you guys grew up I'm like I ain't, I ain't going to that I was like mom come to your therapy let's talk about some of our, our issues what we're dealing with she's like mm, I don't believe in that why not well that's how they grew up and right. I don't think it's right but I want to be able to talk about that on a level and if you see celebrities doing it and people with influence doing it and people who matter talking changes. about it then you're like oh okay it's mm -hmm. not it doesn't have that stigmatism to right. it it doesn't have that like Oh, I don't do that. If mm -hmm. everybody's doing it. Opening up, right. It, right. Turn you, on it, new leaf. Why not? <clears throat> do you feel the responsibility of, you know, obviously like you just spoke on your platform and who you are and what you've been able to accomplish. Um, do you feel the responsibility of being a mentor? Yeah. Mandatory. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's, d d yeah. honestly, like I tell these girls, I was like, I know I'm cute. My new gold hair and um, <laughs> yeah, I, legs yeah, out. I, mm, I look good. One zone. One zone. I'm real. I'm real put together. But I'm t at the end of the day, like all you see is that part. Like mm. I was like, it's hard work. Like I just didn't show up and put on a little dress and go out here and start talking. All of this is hard work. And so if you're not giving back and you're not explaining that, then you're not doing nothing. I on oh, everything. I love your job is service. If you are not giving back, you're not worth anything. Mm. I swear. That's the only reason I. I say that to everybody because I'm like, well, why do I have this platform? Why do I have this pocket? Why do I have this little bit of change? Why do I have this? What Everything I have is not just to keep, right? Mm -hmm. It's not to keep. You're supposed to share. You're supposed to give it out. Like, And I'm doing that in, in the only way that I know how to do it. And and because somebody did it for me. All you need is one yes. You need I, one person to believe in you. I always say if we're not, if we're not out here supporting each other, then what are we doing? You, and you're you know big on I mean? that. You know, you we're not doing, we're wasting time. You know, this is a perfect time for... All, a lot, especially us as a race, our race, we've seen the 20 to 30 make more money than we've ever made mm -hmm. in, in this time. So mm -hmm. it's, it's even more imperative that we support each other and build each other up along the way. You I'm know, with it's, you. It's, it's, it's real important. 
What do you <clears throat> What do you think when you hear like a girl like I want to be just like you? What is that? Knowing your journey and what it took to get here, what God, is it? What do you humbling. think? I'm like, what? What do you mean? What does that mean? <laughs> I'm thinking about like, uh, well, you would be like me. I'm still on some bullshit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but when little girls, you know, what I mean, I little know, girls I know. Do, yeah. I know what you're saying, but in yeah. my mind, I immediately go to, right. huh? Me? Did they see what I was doing the other day? Um, I'm such a mess. I think it's super. They love that though. That's what they love. <laughs> really? That's what they love. And I'm glad you got to show that here because I've known you for a while. Uh -huh. And uh, you know, just how cool and down you don't get that on you're not I you know. can't give that on ESPN. Yeah, it's hard. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, right. You right. just can't, you know. Everybody so to did. be able to They'd be like, You're such an elegant hood lady. I'm like, Thank you. <laughs> I take that. Um, I am. <laughs> to commercial. Uh, yeah, right? yeah, to commercial. Thank you. Because <laughs> right. it's funny, they'll be like, You seem so I'm like, I get it. I know, I'm not, damn mm -hmm. it. But um I, I'm humble by that because I, I think that um I think that we I knew when I was a little kid you, you okay so you guys can relate to this when you were a little kid did you did you feel whatever it was that was special about you or different about you whenever there's a moment in our lives where we're just like mm -hmm. you're supposed to be doing something mm -hmm. special Every, we'll, we, we've had it mm -hmm. if you haven't had it I, I want you guys to really whoever this is listening to the podcast and watching it I want you to look for it because you can still have it as an adult but there was a time when I was a kid and I was like oh okay that's what I'm supposed to do. Like, I'm supposed to touch people. I'm supposed to reach people. I I've, I mean, swear to God, I can remember the day. And then I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I knew that it was supposed to be bigger than, than just me. And, you know, it's not an accident that everybody has this platform because you knew the moment. Right. You remember the day. That's dope. <clears throat> Who's someone you looked up to in this space? You mentioned Oprah. Was she your main focus? Was there anyone in the sports realm that you looked up to female-wise? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm like, you know, this is so weird, y'all. Like, I'm about to give you guys this thing. I'm like, who is she? Why she like her? Um, I like Diane Sawyer. Mm. I like Diane Sawyer. And I'm going to tell you why. She was like a beauty queen before she became that journalist mm -hmm. type chick, right? And she was always so beautiful and elegant, but always so real and honest. And her questions, she was just very sincere. She would just ask you a question and she could politely tear you up, get all in your business, but still look at you with such a loving, endearing mm -hmm. way. And I was like, that shit's great. Because mm -hmm. she genuinely, it's yeah, it's a gift. Because she's literally <clears throat> connecting with your soul, but telling you, you ain't shit, if that's the case, right? right. <laughs> like, it's, and, I, it's the same time. It's like, but it's like, it's a genuine thing. And um, I just always liked her, what I thought was authenticity. And um, I never, like when I would watch her or as a kid, I'd be like, she's great. Obviously it was Oprah, but in terms of her style, how she carried herself, I think a lot of women in my business, even before I got to ESPN, I felt like a lot of women thought they had to be dressed like boys, right? Mm -hmm. Like wear suits. and be, Not very, be sexy. Yeah, right. I was like, oh. Hide your sexiness. I'm like, ho, 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 ho. <clears throat> you could do both. You could, it's yeah. hey, who says you can't? Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm all about it. Like it's not fake. That I want to do it all. Like right. instant, and, and you ultimately will have to pay attention to me. Whether you, you might be looking at whatever, but you're gonna ultimately pay attention right. to me too. Mm -hmm. And I think she was to me one of the first like real like elegant women we'll put together. Um, and once you got past all that, you could listen to this. We got some quick hitters before you get out of here. Okay, Jackie, you want to start it? Top five sneakers of all time. You're a, you're a low key sneakerhead. I do have a lot of. You know what? I wear a lot of Jordans. Like I, t I have so many of these. Like I can't even. Ones, do you get? Do you get? Your go to? My do you, ones. Do you get my boxes of Jordans sent to you, or how you get them? I do. I do. <laughs> I do get them Jack sent wants to, to me. Know. I do get them sent to me. But I, I ask too. Like sorry, I ask too. Like people say, hey Carrie, let me send you something. I'm like, yeah, okay, send me some. I, everybody got a hookup. You got a mm -hmm, yeah. shout out to Samantha Baker. You got a mm -hmm. hookup. Closed mouth don't get fed. Uh, yeah, hi. Yeah, so, Jack has a begging section of our uh, of our show that he gets. Fair whip. Oh, I like those because I wanted a pair of those. So Kobe sent those to you. His lady gave them to you. He, I got just got hooked up. You, you know. say you know someone that knows someone. Okay, you know somebody. somebody. You know somebody. Yeah, yeah. Somebody. You watch it, please I'm definitely blessed. Send me. I and I think and I don't. I I've never strayed away from Nike. Like I ones are the only thing. I can't even give you top five. I once I used to wear Adidas back in the day. Like I I used to like Yeezys, but I mean and that and that was just real trendy. Like yeah. everybody was wearing them, right? Because everybody thought they mm -hmm. was the ones. But except no. me. And you didn't. You didn't wear any. I've never bought one pair. Of you Yeezys. didn't like. Never them. wore one pair. That's good. See, you did though. Mm -hmm. I was Adidas. My oh, whole career. were you really? Yeah, I was Adidas. My whole, it's like the last two years of my career. I went they to Nike. They took my deal, the bra. Yeah, so I was with Adidas since I was like Fuck fourteen. It, <laughs> God damn it! So you ain't know. See, they didn't know. They didn't understand what being a rider was at the time. So they decided to just take my deal. They thought I was just going up there willy, willy nilly. Nah, I was going to ride for my homeboys. Mm -hmm. You know, they took my deal. But That's shout okay. out to Zach at Adidas. 
If I need something, he still look out. All look right, out he still you. take care of you. Yeah. yeah, no. Yeah, I just I just only wear ones. And then, of course, I have low tops. I love them. Like, I bought a... I mean, the, the special edition ones now, every 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 actress, every celebrity, every every movie star got some version of uh, of ones. Have you noticed mm, that? Yeah. Like, did you say... I'm like, dang, what? how come you... Mm, do you mm, got a deal? Mm, the shoe I'm surgeon. Like, yeah, I'm like, dang, what is going on? I want one, too. It's a secret uh, society. So just a Nike girl. That's it. Like I don't have girl. nothing else. I only wear one. I like. Uh, I only wear Jordans, and I think that that's just because they look good on my feet. Like I don't even have. You need an endorsement. You need to tell them. I tried. What happened? Jack knows some people at Jordan. They took his boxes away, but he still knows some people over yeah, there. You might be able to holler at some people for you. I can't help you right now. <laughs> Why not? At Jordan. Well, tell her about story. your boxes. What happened to your boxes? What they, happened? They cut his boxes off. Yeah, but it, uh, the guy who used to run Jordan at the time was kind of weird, dude. And he doesn't he doesn't work there no more. He's the guy that stopped sending me boxes. Now, all the guys. So we, we've been trying to get a message back to MJ that Jack needs well, his actually, boxes. Well, actually, shout out to MJ's daughter. She texts me, and I've I'm actually been talking to her. Did okay. she really? Yes. Yes. Well, Marcus was uh, on Jim, one of Jimmy Butler plugged it, so shout out yeah. to Jimmy Butler. Mark, uh, Marcus Jordan was on one of my other shows I host for Complex, and I you told didn't say him nothing to him. Yeah, no, I just, he gave me his number, so it's still an open up invitation. What are you waiting on? I don't know. I just wanted to tease you with it a little bit. Okay, all right, cool. I'm just glad you got the number. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> a, a dream dinner table where you can soak up as much knowledge as you can. Give me the top five people, dead or alive, you've had at that table with you. Maya Angelou, mm. Condoleezza Rice. Mm. This is so, because I've been listening to these master classes. Um, DJ, and I don't know him like that, Dwayne Johnson, but I would like him. Mm -hmm. I would. Mm -hmm. I, for, cause, you, you, you guys co host Yeah, together, but right? we don't sit and talk and get real. Like, I right. want to have some tequila with him and talk about just the moves he's making and, and how he's he did. He's a yeah. monster and the biggest star in Hollywood. Yes. Probably the biggest star in the world. Yes. Yeah. Not Hollywood, the world. I, I, yeah. I went from playing at Miami to getting kicked not out. Playing. The, like, not really playing. Not playing, right. Kicked out of the CFL. Then I'm going to be a wrestler like my family. Then I'm gonna start guest starring in movies, like, but just be myself in movies. But then I'm gonna start actually doing movies and be really bad at it, and then really just perfect my craft and become a decent actor. And then wrestler, now, like, how? Host of shows. How? Like, you getting paid, man? In every way. Realm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Every way. Got an Under Armour line. Mm -hmm. It's like it, it sells out more than Tom Brady's. Like mm -hmm. what? No, the rock. Dude, <laughs> it's getting crazy. The only one with a spinoff from Fast and Furious. Yeah, like all of that. So I would, I, I want to know. Like and and he stays up. Like, how do you he do don't that? Even sleep neither, right? Yeah, yeah no. He was like, no, it's no need. Like when when we filmed that show, he would, we would wrap at three a.m. He go work out mm -hmm. and then start his second job where he was doing voiceovers. Dedication. And I was just like, what is that? Where does that come from? And he too talked about battling depression. Like mm -hmm. I'm still dealing with it. Like how, so, he would be there. Um, clearly, I have Oprah there, and then I would have my dad and my mom. Wow. Nice. Yeah. That's dope. That'd be some good food. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> good food. We tearing it up. Yeah. Top two most memorable interviews. So many. Um, or favorite. Memorable or favorite. Either one. For me, and here go the fan, Magic came on FT for an hour and some change. First time I ever met him. And that was like, a moment like <laughs> it's magic. That was my favorite player growing up too. I was with you. Like, Grandma, look at me now. My whole heart broke. Grandma, look at me now. Yo, you know, y'all know how magic, how cool he is. He's I remember one cool. day calling his assistant on Christmas Day, like probably like five years ago, and I was like, "Is magic around on Christmas Day?" Because it was a Laker game. They always play on Christmas Day. I want him to speak to my grandmother. Do you know he got on the phone and talked to my grandmother really? for five minutes? Do you know she could just she could have died and went to heaven at that yeah, moment? Dope. The look in her eyes, she was so happy. I've never seen this woman flinch, be nervous. She's so like well put together. She was so nervous, so happy. Yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm all set. That was it. That's, That's all dope. I ever did. So that yeah. was one. I don't necessarily know if this was <laughs> a great interview, but do you guys remember when Chad Johnson came on first take right after he got kicked out of the league for allegedly not to touching the, his his uh, his his then wife or ex wife. Domestic was, violence. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Mm, I don't remember the detail. Um, that was our, that was one of the most memorable moments because uh, they came at his head, and when I tell you it was like a Spanish Inquisition, I felt I felt so bad for him. And then 
they were like, okay, you could, and then to be a part of that, to ask all these questions and see him, how he, I mean, you could cut the tension with a knife. It was like, you can't turn away from it because he wasn't talking, but they were, I mean, it was just, it was crazy. Chad just was not backing down and I was proud of him, but it was the most, it was one of those moments. That and like, remember those art, like there were so many of these different moments where you have and you sitting and you watching these people are like when T.O. came on there, he looked like he went to fight Skip. Like mm -hmm. they, those moments, you can't, you mm -hmm. can't relive right. those moments. Like to be there when they're getting ready to go at each other and commercial break, you're just like, oh shit, who getting, like somebody about to get beat. I literally felt T.O. was about to jump across the table and beat Skip's ass. Like it was that uncomfortable because up until that moment, T.O. hadn't talked to anybody and and Skip used to talk so bad about him. Yeah. Remember mm -hmm. when he was a cowboy? He was talking so bad about Skip him. And you could, and you know, Tio was an mm -hmm. emotional guy. Anyway, you could yeah. just feel like he was about to jump out of the screen and beat his. So there was one of those moments. We can curse. Mm -hmm. ass. Yes. yes. Oh, we can say whatever. <laughs> uh <-huh. clears throat> Last question. Yes. If you can have a sentence or a billboard to share with the world, what would your message be? These are deep. Ain't nobody. Damn. What? Mm -hmm. Share with the world. Don't get too high, don't get too low. Mm, that's simple. Don't get too high, don't get too low. That's the only reason why I think I'm successful. I don't believe all the hype and I don't believe all the hate. Mm -hmm. Right in the middle, even kill. Mm -hmm. I like that. I don't believe the hype and I don't believe all the hate. Because it's never that extreme. That's dope. It's never that extreme. Well, Carrie, we appreciate your time. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you. I love thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank Where's you. my rose, Stack? I, I he, smoked. <laughs> he, he smoked it. I'll go run and get it right now. <laughs> That's a wrap. Episode 12 with the lovely Carrie Champion C. herself. C. My brother Jack. Don't say. Another great show. You can catch this on Showtime Basketball YouTube channel or any platform streaming podcast. All of them. All these years we've been building, building, building. When that opportunity do come my way, that's when the magic happens. Oh, what a KO! Growing up in the Edelman household was crazy. Depression, anxiety, those were things I had. I had haters before, I just got more now. Legalizing sports gambling, might as well legalize cocaine and crystal meth. So many people wanted Sonny dead. The question is who got to him first? This is the hard work part. It's the part that I don't see. We help people understand football. Holy goodness smokes! It's going to be Mamma Mia! What a fight! <laughs>